Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. So for today's video, it's going to be quite different to what you would normally probably see on this channel, like vlogs, hauls, things like that. It's actually going to be a story time of when we got stuck in the lift at the premiere inn on the day I was going to see Shawn Mendes in London. This was like quite a significant day, so I feel like there is long enough to tell a full on story time about it. So yeah, I haven't actually filmed a sit down video in probably about five six weeks now so this feels really really strange but if you do enjoy watching don't forget to leave a big thumbs up subscribe down below make sure you're watching probably next week because a lot of people that are subscribed to this channel this is kind of what you're subscribed for so wait for that and without further ado let's jump straight on into it okay so it is now the 29th of april so this happened two weeks ago tomorrow and by the time this goes up it happened like two and a half weeks ago ish so it was quite a while ago now so yeah if you know me you will know i absolutely hate getting in lifts i got stuck in one when i was probably about six something like that in our state it was literally only for five minutes but i don't like them ever since unless they're like glass and people can actually see if you get stuck in it so yeah i always avoid lifts at all cost i will literally walk up like 10 flights of stairs to avoid it but in this situation i couldn't avoid it so that is where it happened from the premier inn at stratford you probably haven't ever been but it's like five floors to the reception which is 130 steps and then there's another 12 floors of hotel rooms above that so that you have to go to reception and then carry on up so if it had just been like we were on the sixth floor cool could have walked that but there was five floors and then another six so we're on the 11th floor and i did actually try to walk it afterwards but we'll get into that so yeah we got to the hotel as normal turned up on that day i've vlogged i'll stick a few clips in maybe here and there where it's relevant because i did actually film a little bit inside of that lift and then we went up in it, got the keys, went up to the room, all was fine. And then we chilled out for a bit before the concert. And then we were going to go to Westfield to get some McDonald's before we set off to go to the O2. So this was about three, half three maybe. So obviously we went back down in the lift again. It all was fine. I'll just also add, I've stayed in this hotel three times now. And there's three lifts and one of them is always out of order. Like, not the same one, just one of them is always out of order. And I have looked on the reviews of the hotel since, and apparently this happens quite regularly. So, don't think I'll be staying there again, or at least getting in that lift again. Right now, McDonald's. Oh. Now, I don't think you're able to really noisy, but yeah, we're just sat on like, so it's really interesting. Westfield. We've just got some McDonald's to eat, so we've got about playing now. We'll pull this off towards the hotel. So, all was good. It was probably about five o'clock. And we said we'd go back to the hotel room because my phone was on like 40% so obviously I needed to charge that. I did have a portable charger but I didn't have a wire to charge it with. Um, and then I wanted to like change my outfit because I was wearing jeans and I was going to wear a dress to the concert. Swap bags, a few things like that. So we went to get in the lift. So we got in it, so I had my mum and dad and then there were these two guys which were French that could kind of speak English but not a lot. And it turns out they'd been at the Notre Dame the day before when that had gone on fire. So they were like saying that they were an unlucky child. So we got in it and then it was going up and up and up towards this first floor. And then suddenly, it, like where it says zero and then it says one, it changed and it just started saying ah. And I was like, that's really weird. And the next thing we knew, the lift just like free fall. Like it was going to fall to the bottom of the shaft, but it didn't. It fell a bit and then stopped. And then it just stopped dead and we were like, what the hell is going on here? Now these lifts at Premier Inn, they say they can fit 14 people in, but with 5 people, trust me, it was small inside to start with. So we were like, this is a bit weird, it's been 30 seconds, we haven't moved, you know, nothing's happening. So there's all these different buttons you can press, so these French guys are like pressing all the buttons, seeing if we can sort of do anything to get us out and nothing was working. So then there's an alarm button on the lift and we're like, right, we're going to have to press that then, so we press this alarm button nothing happens try and press it again nothing happens we were like right well, what we'll do is we'll try and find out the number for the reception of the hotel we'll ring up the reception and it'll all be fine we'll get out it's cool we'll be out in five minutes time that's not actually gonna happen so i was on my phone there was no wi-fi signal in the lift and um, i did have one bar of 3g but it was very hit and miss if it had worked i sent a tweet saying i was stuck in the lift and then that was it for half an hour and then it came back half an hour later and someone had a load of notifications like oh my god are you okay so yeah it was very hit and miss in that sense so i couldn't actually google to get the number of this premiere in but the guy which was in the lift with us who he was 
who was from France, obviously he was on a different phone network altogether. His phone was kind of working a bit more. So anyway, we said we'll just try and hold down this alarm button and then it did this like ding, ding, ding. <coughs> and I do have a vlog clip where that is in the background so I will play that back if I can. So this went back to some national like place of where the, this Lyft brand is from, somewhere across the country basically not in London or anywhere near. The people when we got out of the lift eventually didn't even know that it had been stuck in the reception which was an absolute joke. There was no contact between us and the reception which was a bit like mm hmm. So anyway this woman was like yeah um, you'll be fine don't worry just sit on the floor stay calm and we're like we're literally stuck in this box and there was no like air or anything in it it was just still it must have been about 30 degrees in there because obviously everyone's breathing and close together and it was a warm day to start with so it got hot very very quickly so then she was like i'm gonna call a technician and then i will call you back now with this like alarm system it would let you call the person for 30 seconds and then this voiceover will come on saying if you want to carry on the call please press again so you could press that it go on for another 30 seconds and then it just cut you off from the person and that was that and then you have to wait for them to ring you back again. So it's a basically a big pain in the ass. Okay. Oh, she rang back after about 10 minutes and she was like, yes, so the nearest technician is in Lakeside, which is in Essex. I'll put a little map on screen now of Westfield to Lakeside. Bearing in mind, we were stuck in this lift at five o'clock on a Tuesday night and you would have to come round the M25 in rush hour, which is bad enough, like in the middle of the day she was like he'll be half an hour and i was like no he's literally gonna be about an hour and a half to get here i'm gonna miss the concert i've come all the way to london for literally nothing i paid 300 pound for tickets we paid like 100 pound for this hotel room and it's literally gonna be for nothing so anyway at this point like my mum was sat on the floor and she was like basically having a complete meltdown because she thought the lift was gonna fully fall down and we were all gonna die basically so yeah that was fun I was really concerned about the fact I had like an L30% phone battery, I was going to miss my concert, I was going to be stuck in this lift, I had like this much water left, no one else had any so I mean I had the upper hand in that sense. So yeah, then it was a waiting game for this lift technician to turn up. So we were sat on the floor for maybe like another half an hour or something like that. The woman would call back every now and then just to check we were okay. But again, there was no contact between the premiere and reception and us so that was really strange. And then we started to hear like voices at the side of the lift shaft. Now the lift had doors on this side and doors on this side. So we started banging on these doors what we'd come in from. And you could kind of hear almost like people walking past this side. It was really strange. So then we were like pressing all these random buttons. And there was this one and it was like a rectangle, a line and then another rectangle. So we pressed that button and then suddenly these doors opened up and it was just like this big maintenance floor almost. It was like a warehouse that it opened up into and I was like, I don't give one. Like I am literally getting out of here. I don't care where the hell I am. There'll be fire escapes, stairs or something. I can just get in out of here. So I went to like jump up off the floor and grab my bag and then my mum tried to like pull me back because she was like, where are you going? I was like, well, I'm not staying in here any longer. So we all kind of jumped up off the floor and then I managed to get out and then the doors went to shut again. So my dad like rammed his arm against it and then we all got out of this lift. So obviously this was like maybe 45, 50 minutes that we've been stuck in it and the feeling of fresh air when you go out is like, <gasps> So it come out into this big room and then there were the three premiering lists and then the three lists on the other side and then there was no one there, it was just this empty space. So there were these doors and then there was an office and we could see like a security guard sat there. So we went knocking on the door and he was like, how the hell did you get here? And then we were like, the lift stopped, we pressed a button, it's opened us up, opened up the door and let us out like we don't know how we've got here basically so he was really confused and he was like yeah well you shouldn't be here this is like a maintenance floor and the lift shouldn't have brought you here like that's really really strange so anyway he guided us back down and out of the westfields building altogether because the premiering kind of connects into westfields and then it brought us out of this like escape room downstairs and we we're like fresh air so at this point it must have been about six o'clock ideally we were already waiting to be on the way to the concert by now my phone was nearly dead and i was like this is just gonna be a complete nightmare so we went to walk back around back into the premier inn and obviously i was like there's no way on this earth i am getting back in a lift right now like it ain't happening even though at this point strangely enough the lift we had got in was then displaying numbers like one two three so it was working again as soon as we got out it made literally no sense but yeah i was like right 
I am going to walk up 11 flights of stairs to get back to this hotel room and get changed and everything else and oh my god was that a bad idea. So I got to the reception floor which was 140 steps and if you know me I am the unfittest 18 year old you will probably ever meet. I haven't done any form of exercise since I left school three years ago and even that was literally playing like dodgeball once a week to which I would just stand at the back and not get involved in because I'm just not sporty. I can't really do anything without getting out of breath like it is, it's actually probably quite bad for my age but yeah so I got to like the second floor and I was vlogging a bit again I'll stick that in here. So we got out of the lift we pressed a button and opened some door but now I don't want to go back in it so I've got to walk up like nine flights of stairs and my breath already. I'll also link down below the actual whole vlog of the night because it's quite a strange night to say the least. So yeah, I got to the fifth floor and then you can walk out into the reception and there were some seats in the reception. I was like, I'm just going to have to go and sit down and my head was literally pumping. Like I could hear my pulse in my head like boom, 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 boom. And I had this thing on my phone where you can take your pulse and it was like 180 something. Like it was mad. So I was like sat on this chair and I was like feeling dead dizzy and crap. And then I was like, how the hell am I going to get up the next six floors? So anyway, it turned out I ended up having to get back in the lift to get up the last six. I was like, I just cannot do this. So we went back up to the room and then I got, I put my phone on charge on airplane mode to try and get it done even quicker. And then I got a lead for my portable charger because I tweeted saying, can you take um, portable chargers into the O2 Arena? And thank God you could. So I managed to charge that on the tube while we were on the way there. So I got changed and everything. And then we went to get back in the lift. Well, I didn't get back in that lift, I got back in a different lift to go towards the O2 Arena. So at this point, obviously, it was only me and my dad. And my mum was literally like, text us as soon as you get out of that lift, like, so I know that you're okay. So we got in it, and there was this guy in it, and he had, like, overalls on and a toolbox. And he just, he looked out of place in a Premier Inn hotel, to say the least. So my, ba my dad was stood there, and then he was like, you're not a lift technician, are you, by any chance? And he was like, yeah, I am, why? And then he was like, oh right, we've just been stuck in that lift, what you were going to fix. We pressed some button and it let us out and blah blah blah, just to explain the story. And then he was like, oh you were only stuck in it for an hour, that's actually pretty decent. Most people are stuck in that lift for about four hours. And I was like, four hours? I would literally have died. I would have had no phone battery, no water, no food, it was 100 degrees. I'm never staying in that hotel again. So yeah, we had this like conversation with him and then he was saying he's fixed the fault now, blah, 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 blah. And then he got out, obviously, on the ground floor with us. I was quite glad he was with us because I thought if anything goes wrong, he can kind of sort it out for us while we're in there. And then we went to go and get the tube to the O2 Arena. So I've actually wrote all my points down here, but I've literally not even read that. I just remembered all that off the top of my head. I'm quite proud of my memory. Because it's now like a goldfish. So yeah, obviously when we were in the reception the next morning, handing the keys back in, we just had to go down. So I decided to walk down the whatever, 12 flights of stairs. The next day I couldn't move my legs. Like we got home, I went to get out of bed the next morning and I couldn't move my calves at all because of the whole motion of walking down. It sounds ridiculous, but it happened. So yeah, um, my dad complained to the people on reception and they were like, oh yeah and um, i'm sorry about that you know these things happen and we were like well if this lift breaks on a regular basis sort it out like so yeah and then the chinese guy in the queue was like listening to us and um, when we were complaining about it and then he was like his face was like and then suddenly he was walking down the stairs as well so i mean don't think he would to get back in the lift neither so then we wrote a complaint on complaint online to the premier in i'm not joking it was about three pages long and then they sent this email back the other day, which I will read out. I'm honestly not that happy with the whole Premier Inn service, to be honest. I thought we should have got, like, some money back or something because we did say, like, we missed the start, the concert and stuff. We didn't. We just made it in time, like, by the skin of our teeth. But we would have almost missed it and it kind of put a downer on the night. So, yeah. They replied back saying, Dear Paul, 
Thank you for contacting us to share the experience of your stay at London Stratford Hotel. It's important that you enjoy our ti your time and I'm sorry to read that the lift stopped working while you were inside. I can understand how this is, must have been distressing, especially just before the concert and if your wife felt really underwhelmed with the situation. This is definitely not up to Premier Inn's usual high standards and I would like to apologise for this happening. I would also like to apologise that the reception team weren't able to help you out of the lift and that you could not reach them in the need. We aim to provide excellent service for our guests and I am sorry we fell short on this occasion. Please be assured that your feedback has been passed on for review. I'm pleased to hear that you could be helped out about the emergency services took a while to arrive. We didn't contact the emergency services but yeah, I hope that you and your wife was okay when you got out. Forgot about me. It is rare that our guests are not happy with their stay and so your feedback is valuable. It's been shared with the hotel team. Uh, management and blah 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 basically they gave us absolutely nothing they were just like your feedback's been shared at the hotel what the hell does that matter to us like we should have got some sort of compensation surely or a night stay or something i don't know but i feel like to keep your customers happy you should have done something like that but yeah that is the story of us getting stuck in a lift i know a lot of people are also hate lifts and this probably isn't the best story to be listening to also I found out afterwards the chances of getting stuck in a lift are 1 in 16,000. I've been stuck in two lifts in my lifetime. I am 18 years old and I've probably been in about 100 lifts because I take the stairs literally everywhere unless it's 10 floors. So yeah, I don't think I've got the best luck when it comes to lifts. If you have enjoyed or I shouldn't really say enjoyed, you know, whatever this video, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. And I'll be back next Friday at 4.30, more than likely with a vlog. Bye!